Namaste. Hi. As practitioners of Hatha Yoga, we go through transitions. First, the body is tight, rigid. Then we break free from its stagnation through building physical strength, and mobility, flexibility. Yeah. And then we gain this inspiration because there are plenty of health benefits we gain from the practice. Yeah. And this leads to what? Yeah. Peace, happiness, content, yeah. inspiration. Yeah. And then as we tackle the techniques, we awaken dormant centers in the body. And we open our energetic anatomy. And as we go through these many transitions, we experience not just the beautiful you know, side of the practice, but we also stumble upon you know, our weaknesses. You know, we might experience a blockage there, like a hindrance, you know, and then in some instances of doubt. You know. But still we carry on because we know you know, there's more to come. Right. And as we go through these transitions, our body changes, you know, our perception changes. You know. Let me talk about the body. Yeah. When you practice the beginning stages, especially the asanas, yeah, you feel that the body is so linear. Right leg, left leg, if you're flowing, you know, it's very straightforward. But as the energetic anatomy opens, yeah, it allows you to really face yeah, your hidden stagnation, imbalances. Yeah. And then you might feel now one side is tighter than the other. Yeah. Like as you work through your same techniques, yeah, somehow you need to stop a moment, feel it, because inside of you, you feel the art. Yeah, spaces there which needs to be or which need to be accessed yeah, and worked on yeah, so you can open and then free yeah, your inner body of the stagnation. You might feel that, for example, your navel or other internal body parts there inside goes to the other direction. <laughs> Like you're twisted and crooked inside. You might feel one shoulder is actually dropping lower than the other that you need to always adjust. Like you are what? Like spiraling inside the body. Always making room you know, for the energy to flow through those dormant pockets. So, yeah. Yeah. And even your sides. You, know, you might wake up one morning with one side tighter and then shorter. Yeah. But as soon as you move the body, yeah, like you're going to slither through yeah, the, the bodily joints yeah, by doing you know, the random movements. Yeah, sometimes you rub your body down the floor, yeah, yeah, like you're slithering through and then making some finer adjustments yeah, before, for example, before you do a certain element. Whereas before, yeah, you, know, you go just you go straight down, and then you flip up if you're doing, for example, the Surya Namaskar yeah, or any flow. But yeah, you will now experience that as you go through the transitions, yeah, there's a need to stop, yeah, and feel and rubbing, yeah, so you can allow your body to find its center, and where you're the most open and lighter. Mm. Right. So that stage is really beautiful, yeah. Because through that, yeah, you refine your sensitivities. Yeah. You become more aware and understand the subtleness of your physical, energetic, and then even the mind, yeah, the brain. Because when the body becomes so open internally, you will feel those spaces inside that sometimes, most of the time, yeah, oftentimes, 
you feel this need to <sighs> let it go. And somehow, even if you, how, how hard you try to open that specific center, it's not happening. But the moment you allow that vibration, yeah, the voice, the sound, uh, to drain out, then suddenly you feel this inspiration, the space inside of you opens. And then when you move again, the body is like that. Yes, that's that, for example, yeah, from a down dog, yeah? Whereas before, you go straight there and then you flip. But when you try and feel it, like you just want to let go, mm -hmm. and then curl up, and then this less uh, uh, focus on the alignment. Yeah, see? Yeah. I Externally, I feel like limp, yeah, but internally, I feel so open. Because you're accessing those spaces, you may want to go one side, call it the side, the other side. Anyway, find that kneeling position first before you return. If you're doing, for example, a twist, yeah? Whereas before, you can just quickly wrap. But when the inner body opens, yeah, you will feel the creases of your hips. So, somehow you need to do a bit of this first, yeah, before you do the element. Right. And then changing from one side to the next, yeah, it's not serving you anymore. Somehow you need to break free from the position, yeah, by doing some random stretching, yeah, before you change to the next one. Yeah. And here, see? Yeah, I'm sitting so like crookedly. Yeah. It's random, but this feels good. Yeah. My knees might not be perfectly aligned. My hips might not be perfectly aligned, but this feels so light, feels so good. Yeah, so that stage is what we call involuntary yeah, kriyas already, kriyabhatis, yeah. guyasanas. Yeah. Your body goes through this transition of involuntarily doing asana-like positions, but they're not traditional asana. Yeah. You might even <laughs> make up your own asana because that serves you. And then even your eyes, your tongue, your mouth, yeah. Somehow, if you move them around, if you move the tongue around the mouth, you will feel inner spaces inside of you. Opens up. So, what does this mean? It means yeah, you still enjoy the same technique you know, when it comes to physical, but you modify it yeah, to suit your inner body. So, this is beautiful for what? Yeah taking care and preserving of our body yeah. because as we age we can't be doing those intense asana anymore but somehow you go internally and it feels light and good inside that's number one yeah number two yeah, you refine your sensitivities of the subtleness and then you understand this is most, most important you understand if you go outside and you see practitioners they're enjoying their practice, the journey, you understand them. Because you know, yeah, you've been there, you know that that serves them. <laughs>